What's up, my movers and shakers? I'm Dave. This is kind of MS Paints, and this is the dry box. Hey there, sports fan. Streaky dry brush lines got you down. Yep, you need the all new MS Paints dry box. It's a texture palette you can fill with whatever. It probably already exists. But that's okay. Yeah. Make it at home with junk or even spares. It's the latest invention everyone's talking about. So the dry box ultimately is a lot of shit just stuck together in a... So the dry box is this amazing brand new tool that I've invented. I was looking for inspiration for my upcoming AAT tank tutorial. Artist Opus had done a great video on it and he used something called a texture palette and I thought well why don't I make one of these for myself and that is pretty much what this dry box is and I'm you know I grew up on Blue Peter so basically I'm just making my own. Now as a disabled wargamer the possibilities of dry brushing are more than appetizing sounding to me. The idea that you can do gradual gradients and highlights with a really soft edge and complete lack of needing to do any edge highlighting with a steady hand, that sounds perfect to me. But I've kind of avoided it and never really touched on it on this channel because every time I try to do dry brushing, no matter how much paint I got off on the paper towel, I would always end up straight away hitting streaky lines when I wanted them to be smooth. So the dry box is useful because it essentially allows me to try the dry brush on a realistic surface that I'm not worried about compromising. I can batter this thing, cover it in garbage, cover it in junk, like just heat paint on top of it. And it really doesn't matter. The build time for this is about three hours and depending what you use, it could be very disability MS friendly. It could not be, but it's entirely up to you what you've got. And this is pretty much how I made mine. You're gonna need an assortment of bits, different various textures to bring this texture pad to life. I used foam, rocks, plaster, coffee stirrers, forge world bits and leftovers, a load of whatever, glue, sand, and cat litter. And also a strong, steady surface or a container. So this tutorial is kind of specific to what materials I ended up using, but if you do have these materials, then also basically it's Dungeon Tiles 101, uh, it's Rubble 101, Diorama Basin 101, it's the very basics of everything you might need to expand that knowledge base. And yes, I am cutting paving slabs with a battery. I'd like to point out my dad was a health and safety inspector. Not me at this point, as you can guess. Now just dent these for texture. You can use other rocks, pine bark, things like that, but I'm using screwed up tin foil. And hot glue for speed, as I do believe, also super glue will melt this, but you can use PVA if you want. and I've added some extra pre-cut foam bricks to simulate walls. And I've added some softer round shapes to emulate how I might dry brush over a cloak or smoother minis like Space Marine armor. Most importantly, dry brushing is not all about hard edges and rough surfaces. And if you can make your dry brush resemble something like what you're going to be dry brushing, then that's pretty good. It helps me having a realistic diorama-ish looking setting for when I'm going to be dry brushing realistic diorama settings. Thank you. 
maybe don't get carried away to the point that I did where I've gone on autopilot and started putting mortar in between the bricks and slabs because that's just a complete waste of time. And for the ground cover, I'm moving on to various size grits and sand. Here's where the cat litter comes in. And before you think about sealing everything up and making it nice and firm, make sure one part of every surface type is visible because that is the point of this box. I'm going to seal up my foam with a gloss medium and paint. In this case, I'm using Mod Podge and black acrylic. And just seal the ground cover up by pre-wetting it and then throwing down some water down PVA. I managed to dry this on a radiator in about an hour, but it can take up to 24 hours to dry by itself. And once it is dry, just prime it with whatever color you want. I'm going for a mid gray with some splashes of black just to get the most contrast so I can see how my dry brush is actually performing. Now with this AAT tank I'm doing, there's a lot of hard edges that I do want to pop out, but also there's a lot of smooth curved surfaces that I want to try this out on, so I'm going to give that a go. As you can see, it looks pretty good. All the edges are nice and smooth, all the rounded stuff, there's no real streaks going on, everything blends quite nicely. Now you may be saying to yourself, yeah, I mean, mine already looked that good, which is fair. Mine didn't, so therefore I assume that quite a lot of other people's also didn't, and it was quite a frustrating process. So if you have found this useful, have a go at building your own. And the AAT tank turned out pretty damn fine. So my next episode will be that tank, and it's kind of a successor to this video. However, since I was building this dry box anyway, and I thought people might find it useful, there you have it pretty much. It's the idea that I've given you maybe more than how to build it. Like you build it how you want, based on your necessities and needs. If you want to use spare bits from your Space Marine kit, or bits of Tyranid or whatever, Tyranid, however you say it. You don't say Tyrannosaurus Rex, or do you say Tyrannosaurus Rex? Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus. It was an evil tyrant. Tyrant. There was a. Dry box. If you do make your own or plan on making your own, let me know. And if you come up with any ideas on how to improve on it, also let me know. Thank you for watching. Quite a short one. I'm going out of town next week, so I kind of had to wrap this up real quick and it's Christmas and New Year and blah, blah, blah. But next time will be the AAT tank. So I will see you then. Cheers. I'm out of here.